Hey everyone, Mr. Montgomery again. We're starting a brand new unit today, and we are on page 253. I'm going to write a little bit bigger for you. Two, five, three. This is the page that we're on today, and we're doing lesson 6.1. Now, if you're not on this page yet in your Robot Turtle books, pause the video, stop what you're doing, get that book open before we continue. All right. But if you still have the video rolling, well, I'm just going to keep on going, guys, because I'm guessing you already have your book open to the correct page. And today, we are going to do something kind of fun. It's really not difficult at all. You guys are going to think this is super, super easy, and you're going to get done in, like, a second. All right. So let me start off by saying we're going to be organizing data. I know that sounds really, really scary. Um, but don't worry about it. We're going to be organizing stuff like socks and, um, I don't know, different colored shirts and crayons and which video game system is the coolest. Stuff like that. And we're going to do that by making tally marks. And let me show you what a tally mark looks like before we even go into this. Now, do not write what I am about to write. Just watch. Now, when we write tally marks, they are just little lines that go like that. From top to bottom, that's it. Now, here's the only tricky part with tally marks. When you have five, one, two, three, four, once you're about to put that fifth one, you always put it from corner to corner. Okay, I know it looks kind of goofy, but this is like a mini bundle, or you can call it like a bundle of five. All right? So if you ever make tally marks and you do this, four, five, and you just keep going down, I'm going to mark it completely wrong because that is not how we make tally marks. So just remember the only big rule is once you're about to put the fifth one, go from corner to corner and kind of wrap it up like a package. All right. And that's it. That's the only really big rule that I'm really going to be very picky about. So now that we know what tally mark looks like, how to draw them, and how to make our bundles of five, we're going to organize some data. And data is just a fancy word for numbers. That's it. It really is. It's a fancy word that just means how many, or what number is it. That's all. So let's make a little table, or I'm sorry, a chart. Some people call charts tables. And we're going to be talking about three colors. So the first color we're going to be talking about is green. G-R-E-E-N. Now this part you will need to write down. We're going to need green. And your chart doesn't have to be perfect. See, mine's not perfect, so it's okay. And this is what our chart's going to look like. It's going to have three spaces. So first you write green. And then we're going to write uh, yellow. I would write it in yellow, but I don't have it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, you know what? I, I'll, I'll make it yellow. Hold on. Hold on a second. Except I can't make it super bright yellow or else it's going to be very tough to see. Um, it's going to be like a dark yellow. This one might work. Yellow. Now, that's not the best color either. Oh, man. I'll try to trace over it with a bright yellow, see if that helps a little bit. <laughs> Maybe it didn't help too much, but that's okay. But we can read it. We have green, yellow, and our last color we're going to be working with is blue. So we're just going to write that word blue. Now, if you need an extra few moments or minutes... Pause the video right here, hit the space bar, and make this chart. You're going to write the words green, then yellow, then blue, and you got to make sure you put lines between them, and then put a line underneath all of them. Because right below is where we're going to make our tally marks. Okay, so hopefully if you, were, if you needed more time, you did pause the video, because I'm just going to keep rolling, guys. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to count the green 
crayons. So I'm going to get my green color. You know, let me get a nice dark green. Ooh, that's a nice dark green. I like that. And all we're going to do is, now let's count the crayons down here. Because all the data we have are these crayons on the table right below. So we have one, two, three, and four. So now that we counted four, we know we have to make four tally marks. So let's go do that. One, two, three, and four. Oh, I also uh, almost forgot something, guys. When you're doing tally marks, make sure they're very close together, but make sure that they're not going over top of each other. Because if you go one, two, three, four, I can't see that that is four tally marks, can I? No, there's no way. It just looks like one big blobby tally mark. And also, you don't want them too far apart. You don't want to put one here, then one there, then one there, then one over here. Because that that's just not how we do tally marks. They have to be closer together. So put them... <coughs> oh, excuse me. So we're going to put them kind of close. One, two, three, and four. And there we go. We have our four tally marks for our four green. But you know what? I actually wanted to let you guys try the next one on your own. I feel like this is an easy enough lesson where I can already have you start trying some on your own. So now go ahead and count the yellow, because we're on yellow right now, count the yellow crayons and put the correct number of tally marks. All right, did you do it? It shouldn't have taken you very long. So let's go ahead and I'm actually going to use, uh, I'm going to use red just so it stands out nice. So let's make sure you did it right. I have one, two yellow crayons, so I'm going to make two tally marks. One, two. All right, now try the last one with blue. Count the blue crayons and make the correct number of tally marks. Okay, that one should have been super, super quick. Should have only taken you half a second. So let's check it. Uh, let me get my blue. And let's count. Uh, one. <laughs> right? Super easy, super fast. There's only one crown, so we just put one tally mark. So now we just made an entire data table about what color crayons we have and how many. So if you were to show this to someone and say, hey, this is a chart about my crayons, they would say, oh, okay, you have, a, you have a green, you have yellow, and you have blue, and you have the most green because you have four green crayons. And yellow is the second most because you have two yellow crayons. And blue is the least because you just have one blue crayon. So that's how a data chart works. All right, guys, I'm going to be using that term data or data. People say it differently all the time, and I might switch how I say it. Um, I'm going to be using it a lot. It just means what numbers for what category. That is just called data. So now this is our crayon data for what is on the table. And that's it. I might actually make that a question on your quiz, so make sure you remember it. All right, let's go on to the next page, which is page 254, and we're going to get just a little bit more practice in and, you know, have fun just making da data tables. All right, you guys can see that on page 254, we have a good little girl up there explaining about tally marks, and you can see that uh, they made a whole bunch of fives up here. Every time you have five, that fifth one goes across from corner to corner now. Whether or not you start at the this corner up here or the other one going that way, that doesn't matter to me. But make sure that when you have five, the fifth one goes across. And then you start a whole brand new one, just like they did over here. So for example, if you have one, two, three, four, five. Oh, see, now I made a mistake. All right, five goes across, 
and then you start over again if you have more. Say we had 10, start at 5, because we have 5 here already. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Alright, and that's how you just keep making tally marks. Every time you hit 5, you go across, and every tally mark just counts as one more. Now let's see at the problem that we're doing down here. Uh, problem number one, we are making a data chart or data table about these socks that we see up here. We have green, orange, and blue. And they already did the green for us because there is one, two, three, four, five, there's six green. And you guys can already kind of see that they did them for you down here. So when you do six, we have one, two, three, four, the fifth one goes across, and now I have to start a new one because I still have one more to draw, because I need six total, and six, all right, and that's it, that's all there is to it, so I'm going to give you guys a chance to try the orange ones on your own, so go ahead, make sure you count the orange socks, and make the correct number of tally marks, Alright, if you still need more time, pause the video. If you don't need more time, well then keep it rolling and let's go over it together. Let's make sure you did it correctly. So for orange, you're just going to count the orange ones. One, two, three, four, five. So we should have five tally marks and they should look like this. One, two, three, four, and five. Now again, whichever corner you start from doesn't matter to me. As long as that fifth tally mark goes across, it makes a little bundle. All right, now go ahead and try the blue socks for our blue part of the chart. All right, if you need more time, pause the video. If not, let's check your work. All right, first we got to count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so we need seven tally marks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. See how I just kept counting by ones every time I drew a tally mark? That's all you got to do, and you'll never get it wrong. But now I want to ask you guys a special bonus question. I want you to circle the socks that have the most. So if you think there's the, the most amount of green socks, circle that green sock down here. If you think orange has the most, circle the orange sock. If you think blue has the most, circle blue. Alright, did you circle one? Did you circle the socks that, or the color sock that there is the most of? You should have. And the one that has the most is blue. We can see from our data chart that we have the most tally marks under blue. Now, if you're looking at all these and you're just thinking to yourself, oh man, I don't remember how many there are, well then count them. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have one, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, uh, when we work on tally marks, we will be slowly working on how to count by fives. Because when you see a whole bunch of uh, mini little bundles like we do up top here, like right here is what I'm talking about, uh, instead of counting all these one at a time, that can take a lot of time, you know? So if we count by fives, we can actually count them really, really fast. And here's how counting by fives works. You first start with five, and then five more than that is 10, 
5 more than that is 15. And 5 more than that is 20. Now you can already see a pattern happening. In the 1's column right here, it goes 5, 0, 5, 0. So what do you think is going to be 5 more than 20? We know it can't end in a 0. So it has to end in a what? A 5. So we would have 25. And now we see the pattern, right? And also, oh, let me show you the second part of the pattern here. So after 25, we have 30. If you notice, the ones place stays the same two times. There's two ones, then two twos, two threes, and then there would be two fours after that. All right. I know it that that might be a lot right now, but we're going to work on it as we go through the unit. So don't worry. All right. So let me explain your independent work. Let's go to page 255. All right. So this is this might be a, a little weird because of how they have this organized. So these first three questions, we already actually just answered the question number two right here. It says, which color sock has the most tally marks? We already did that one together, and I had you circle it, and we wrote blue. Um, yeah, because I had seven. Uh, for number three, you're going to have to, I will read these questions to you guys, but you have to use the chart on the other side, on the, uh, on the last page we just did, on page 254, okay? So just use the tally marks to answer these questions. So number three says, how many blue socks are there? Well, we already figured that out. So all you got to do is write the number on that blank space, right? Easy enough. Number four says, how many socks are there in all? So when we see the words in all, they're not asking just how many green, how many orange, how many blue. They want to know if you were to take all those socks all together, what is the grand total of socks? See, that stuff is easy peasy for you. And then when we go down here to five and six, now remember guys, you're doing all this completely on your own. I'm not giving you these answers. I feel like these are, this is an easy enough unit or lesson that you can actually just jump right into it. All right, because we know how to read these tally marks now. So number five, how many shorts does Saul have? So we have a person named Saul right here, and this is his closet. That's what it tells us up here. He has shirts, shorts, and shoes. How many shorts does he have? The chart tells you. Number six, which item in his closet does Sal have the most the most that is your keyword the most of okay does he have uh, shirts the most shorts shoes you tell me and then write that word on this line but that's not it there is one more thing I do want you to do for your independent work and that's actually on the next page so make sure you turn to page 256 and I'll explain the last problem to you Okay, so the last thing I would like you guys to do for your independent work is problem number eight. Now, this, instead of answering questions about a tally chart, you're going to make one last tally chart. We have blue hats, green hats, and purple hats. All of them are up here. You see all the blue. You see all of the green. And you see all of the purple. Make a tally chart with those hats. When you're done this, there is an assignment on our uh, Google Classroom to go into IXL, and you must try it, try your best, do it. There is, uh, I don't want anyone saying, I don't feel like doing it. It is your assignment, okay? I know you guys can do it, so go get it done. If you have questions, please let me know. So hopefully this lesson was just as easy for you as I was hoping for. Um, so... Just let me know if you have questions, if you're, if you're confused about anything. Other than that, I'll see you guys later, and have a great day.